Hello and welcome to Market Guru. Joining me today on the show is Ramdeo Agarwal. Thanks very much, uh, Ramdeo. It's always a pleasure talking to you. Let me go back to when we last spoke, which was a little over a month ago. And I remember you started by saying a lot is happening in the marketplace. News flow is pretty disturbing. Mm -hmm. That yeah. sounds like an understatement <laughs> now <laughs> after yeah. what we've seen since then yeah. in the last yeah. one month. Yeah. It only keeps getting more disturbing. Yeah. Um, I mean, this time it was more on expected lines that uh, uh, economy is slowing down. Uh, the frustration with Delhi was increasing in any case. And uh, now uh, what will happen is that whatever they'll do, it will be insufficient in the sense that too late, too little kind of. Yeah. But cumulative, I think uh, in next 12 months, you'll see major action. Mm -hmm. If at all there is anything left to be done. So we will see some positive actions from but, there. But do you see at least an intention now on the part of the government? I know it's happened after it's been pushed to the wall, yeah. but at least uh, there are certain things which are on the table or at least an attempt being made now, do you think? But you're this, saying uh, yeah. even if they do it, yeah. it is too little too late? Too little. That's the kind of uh, reaction you're going to get. I mean, now uh, people like um, uh, Premji or Naran, they're getting frustrated. And coming yeah. out openly. Yeah, openly and uh, they're very patient people, very nice people. So uh, when they are becoming uh, kind of uh, really um, getting restless about what's happening in Delhi, it's clearly... Uh, there is something which is amiss, you know, um, which people like us, we don't understand why things are not moving in Delhi and with the good, best intentions. It's not that people who are there, they speak any different. They also say this thing should happen, that should happen. But I think somewhere the state center relationships, that lack of, uh, you know, very strong leadership, you need Rowdy Rathor kind of, you know, <laughs> guy in Delhi. A rowdy Rator, okay. Let me come to the other very important point that you raised when we last spoke. And I think that's been one silver lining, and that's oil. Yeah. And I remember you said back then that, you know, you had uh, traveled to Omaha. You were in a uh, meeting where, uh, you know, Warren Buffett was there, and there was a lot of discussion around oil. Yeah. And one of your takeaways was, and, that you, and you said that you thought that the energy scene is changing surely where oil price has to pull down significantly from current levels. Yeah. Uh, and you even mentioned that, you know, gravity will play out even yeah. more. Yeah. Uh, is that a silver lining? How do you see that playing yeah, out? Yeah, so it has that? clearly played out uh, much more rapidly than what I thought. And uh, now oil is struggling below uh, 100 clearly, 97, 98. Uh, uh, though the uh, production is still pretty high, so they are always pumping to the fullest capacity. They are pumping uh, maybe, uh, you know, 30 plus million barrels, all the OPEC. So, uh, I mean, they have the, at this, at this point of time, they have the lever, uh, price lever in their the control. They can always cut the production and take the price a little up. But maybe U.S. elections, maybe the current uh, uh, state of global economy, they don't want to, they want to actually help. This is a kind of a ultimate stimulus to the global economy by bringing down the oil price by $20, $25, apart from gas price pulling down, because WTI is still keeping that gap of $15, $17. So I'm quite sure that uh, if the supply line remains open like this, the oil is headed even lower. Mm -hmm. uh, the commodity prices have seen a uh, major decline in last month and is still declining. So I think the current account deficit uh, uh, should start uh, turning around. In, uh, in a month's time, when the lower oil prices will feed into the payment system, yeah. uh, and and that, and that makes you optimistic. That as makes me feel that uh, probably concerned. we are passing through the worst times. Hmm. I mean, uh, it, the economy is uh, clearly uh, slow, slow, uh, slowed uh, big time, but it's not like we look at cement production. See, instead of uh, giving this, uh, you know, the CSO data and all, we got to look at on the ground what's happening. Hmm. Car, car demand is still grown by 2-3%, despite the fact that most of the cars which are demanded by the uh, consumers, they are not there on the shelf. Yeah. They are all wanting diesel cars. But what is available on the shelf is petrol cars. So obviously, the natural growth could be much higher than uh, what looks to be. Two-wheeler uh, sales are up 11 half 12 percent for the first two months. Yeah. Cement sales is up by 13 percent. This is not the economy where it is looking to be 0.1 percent, you know, kind of IIP. So you're questioning some, the numbers itself. Yeah, clearly you're... Uh, you're saying there's a disconnect between what's on the ground yeah, that you're seeing or what's being reported by yeah, companies yeah. and what's being reported by the government. Yeah, so things don't seem to be as bad as... Uh, and we're talking about May data. We're not talking about mm. uh, something, uh, you know, a year old or something like that. So even the revenue collection is 17% uh, up kind of thing year on year. Of course, it is all, uh, supported by um, uh, service tax, 40-45% uh, growth. So I think things are... S slow, but it's not that scary as uh, headlines make out to be. Hmm. And I know you told me last time that you know don't go for the don't go for the headlines, but uh, look at stocks. Stocks, yeah. 
What's your what's your uh, take at this point of time after what we've seen in the last one month? Mm -hmm. uh, I know you told me even last time that there are some good stocks that you would look at buying even at these levels. Have valuations gotten better for you? Are there some good stocks individually which have come down to a point where you would want to buy? Yeah, yeah clearly. I mean, uh, uh, we are very active. We are very uh, keenly looking at some stocks. We are bidding for them, buying in also in slowing. I mean, uh, when the which sectors would be? That? I don't want to talk stock specific yeah, with you, but, 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 uh, but if you were to take this basket of whatever 15, 20 stocks that you've liked, roughly which sectors would they fall into? I have my current preferences for consumer facing companies. Consumer facing companies which are good franchises. I mean, turf, great companies, you know, great businesses which have. I mean, this is the time actually greatness is being proved. Mm -hmm. When things are down and out, this is the time companies who are doing well, the, their PNL is intact, their margins are intact. Uh, and if growth is also there, uh, maybe even at a lower level. I mean, those are the businesses where if by chance uh, uh, valuation is reasonable and you understand the company well, I think that's where you should be putting money. Like last time I talked about, I don't know whether I mentioned it, about say State Bank of India. Right. It's an old uh, holding in the portfolio. They declared their quarterly results, bumper results, and the promise is also that uh, things are going to be better. So uh, profit is double, price is half, six, seven times P multiple, you know, growing uh, has grown at 18 percent, 17, 18 percent in the last 10 years. There is no reason You're why. You're not worried about the concerns on NPAs, not just about this bank, but generally as a sector. Yeah, I mean, see, it has gone through one of the worst cycles of uh, NPAs, and uh, we think that uh, there is so much of clamor for liquidity release, uh, rate cuts, and rate cuts will happen. I mean, the reasons will be different every time. You know, I mean, now again the conditions are created for uh, another 50 bips cut or whatever. Yeah. So. Uh, Do you believe that will happen on 18th? I'm, I've taken it for granted that it will happen. Maybe if not, <laughs> if, if not in 15 days after a month, because okay. see the situations are being developed where you have to have a much, much more reasonable monetary policy. That may not be the only solution to this problem, but that is also necessary. Step in the right direction, yeah, you yeah, feel. Yeah. So you, you do believe that some cut should happen. No, no, it, it, it must happen. You would I mean, want it to happen. More than whether it is physically required or not, but psychologically it makes a huge thing yeah. that. Uh, uh, Reserve Bank thinks that uh, uh, it is required. I mean, the, there is a stress, particularly the capital intensive segment of the economy, which is infrastructure and a uh, whole lot of capital intensive projects. They are uh, sensitive to the uh, co uh, cost of liquidity. And if you only release liquidity and don't reduce the rate, then also it is very tough. And or if you cut the rates and don't release the liquidity, then also there won't be any pass through. So I think both are required and most likely both will happen. Let me come back to the point that you were making, uh, you know, on the whole SBI thing, that there were front, there are frontliners today. I think that's the larger point yeah. you're making. There are some yeah. frontliners across sectors today yeah. uh, that are still growing yeah. at very decent rates and yet their prices are rock bottom, the stock yeah. prices. Yeah. Uh, there are more stories like that as yeah, far yeah. as frontliners are yeah. concerned? Frontliners, uh, uh, yes, I mean, uh, because unless the frontliners are cheap, the, uh, the other, you know, stocks uh, in that same segment would not be very cheap. Hmm. So uh, there are intermediate companies, you know, which are uh, eventually consumed by the final consumers. Those companies are available at uh, now single digits uh, P multiple. I mean, 10, 12 P multiples, you can get a whole lot of companies. Yeah. It, it just needs your uh, attention and, uh, you know, kind of uh, research and figuring out which businesses you understand, which are uh, a little better than average and uh, which have cash flow. The manage I think management integrity is coming big time. Yeah. The management which are clean, which which have uh, which have behaved in such a way that uh, somebody can believe them. I mean, sitting at distance because stock buying is like buying at a it's a long distance buying of uh, businesses. So I have to have complete faith in the integrity of the management. See, business call is ours, but integrity of the management is taken for granted when you buy stocks. So that is uh, very important. And so any management which have uh, you know kind of not behaved well they would be looked upon uh, very badly at this point of time. Hmm. Increasingly, Ramdev, and I'm not just talking about what S&P has said, but increasingly, uh, yeah. especially a lot of global experts have mm -hmm. started putting a question mark and saying, we now doubt whether this is a structural slowdown for India. Till now, mm -hmm. most experts, including you, were of the view this is cyclical, the long-term growth story is intact, structurally there's nothing wrong. Yeah. Are you beginning to? Are you beginning to also question it and say, uh, that structurally too, maybe we are losing our way. I think structurally leadership is an issue. I mean, mm -hmm. so not so much of the economy. Economy is there. Uh, large part is private. Uh, 
uh, young population and whatever is required in economy is growth doesn't there. happen all of that no, could no, go but down the drain grow, see we are just about, a lost opportunity but just uh, two quarters and at the peak of the rate cycle and uh, global environment not too uh, too good and our i mean the biggest thing is that our own uh, political setup is such that center doesn't uh, listen to whatever center proposes uh, you know state disposes of they have their own party politics gst is such a big uh, and well understood reform it has been on discussion for so many years and yet uh, what is good for the nation or for the states is not being done yeah. I mean, this is a crazy thing yeah. and so you know with this kind of uh, this is like uh, uh, you know you want to become you want to become chartered accountant but you don't want to go to the exam I mean, <laughs> how will you become chartered accountant you know so you have to pass with the exam so my sense is that that's what we are uh, somehow we are not able to do it hmm. we need to uh, we need to take those small small things in every aspect of uh, a thing whether it is in coal so whatever is the uh, getting a good chairman like now we have a good chairman in the coal india hmm. i mean he's going and seeing what all uh, blockages are there he'll clear it up and next one or two years there is a promise that now coal coal production will pick up so like that there are five six seven uh, places where methodically they must go and unclog you know whatever is the problem with the thing and they can do it i mean government officials have tremendous power i mean still they dictate uh, work it's not a, a, a lawlessness across the country they also have the capability it's yeah, just that they, they just have, need to use it yeah, more yeah uh, coming to the other point that happened after we last spoke was the rupee yeah it just kept going into a free yeah, fall ramdev yeah, yeah. i know that even last time you articulated uh, that it doesn't mean necessarily all is bad because there are a lot of companies and sectors uh, who benefit also from it i know we typically always talk about it mm -hmm. uh, but the kind of fall that we've seen how would you look at it it needs a little more work because uh, now cost structure is also a lot more globalized in the sense that uh, uh, what you consume in steel or aluminum though it might be produced in india but they are price to the global parity mm. you know so uh, how every company will uh, get impacted from the cost side and how much they'll be able to pass on uh, one thing is very clear that uh, it will be inflationary for the cost structure and uh, the companies which can pass on mm. the any kind of cost structure whether it is uh, uh, um, uh, fueled by rupee decline or per se increase in the uh, you know kind of uh, raw metal prices if the company has a business model where he can pass it through somehow they are the companies which are going to do well in this market hmm. you know because there will be very few right hmm. now to pass on everything it is going to be tough uh, because the demand is slowing and uh, so uh, my strategy would be to focus uh, on individual company and what is the impact of rupee in that rather than trying to figure out in general you know hmm. uh, but, but but you believe that uh, now that most people are saying 53 55 is the new normal now just live with it the days of 45 for the time being at least are gone it looks like i mean this 45 scenario is uh, i mean but it all depends on the oil where is oil going i mean if it another 10 dollars uh, fall and uh, you see different kind of vibrance in the stock market and then suddenly a lot of things will start looking okay what we did was right kind of you know yeah. so uh, so a lot of things will change and uh, even and politics is also changing now Yeah. to some extent there is some momentum in uh, kind of uh, at least the concerns are there some actions will take place so some will happen on the political front but a lot will happen on the technology and uh, you know global economy front how crucial will 17th june greece be for you how i crucial? don't understand actually i mean uh, is is a big thing and uh, hopefully see one of the thing is that it's not limited is it a matter of concern yeah it is a matter of concern but uh, it is something which we don't understand i mean uh, so you have to be little cautious keep watching uh but uh, you know one of the thing is that it's about a nation yeah. corporations you can shoot down and tomorrow they will not exist and there are 2200000 employees they will come on the roads but this is a this is a corporation this is not a corporation it is a nation yeah. and nation will continue so it may decline there could be some disruptions but it will happen over a period of time yeah. and the world will come to save a nation even if it is a small nation in greece and uh, spain they are very large and uh, they have european counterparts there and they are very rich people also it's, it's not basket case yeah. so i think uh, uh, it's not going to be a one shot kind of thing yeah. whatever happens it might get prolonged uh, for a long time and there are a lot of solutions which will come out as the crisis deepens but if you are saying that it's something that uh, even you find hard to grapple with and many experts find hard to grapple with as to the impact on india then are you saying that largely our movements in our market are more sentiment driven when it comes to greece that people are reacting without really understanding what the impact could be 
I cannot uh, speak for others. Because I, don't, I, I don't know how to think about it because I was there in Omaha, as I, as I told you. This question got deliberated for 10 minutes between Manjar and uh, Buffett and nobody had any answer. I mean, they, at the end of it, they said that uh, it's a tough one and we don't know how things will so impact out. could be. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let me move to uh, one of the other sectors which has been battered out of shape as far as the market is concerned. But at least as far as the government is concerned, a lot of movement now seems to be happening. And that's the infrastructure space. Uh -huh. There's a clear cut plan. Uh, there are targets being set in, yeah. you know, and many of them are actually higher than, as we reported yesterday, higher than what uh, even the planning commission had been asking for. There seems to be a thrust at least. Mm -hmm. Do, do you think that you would uh, now see value in that sector? See, I never understood this. A uh, lot of these companies, how do they do business? They don't have any cash flow. They they give so much of uh, speed money to get the contract and to get the payment through. And then at the end of it, after performing everything, if hopefully things are done in, on time, hmm. after that also, uh, what is the profit portion, 5-7%? That also comes after one year of performance guarantee. So I can't. I mean, these things I don't understand, mm. uh, how business is being done. And uh, since bulk of the infrastructure contract, somehow directly and directly, is government kind of uh, money. And uh, government is a huge bargaining power and corrupt bargaining power. I mean, and they are using it to, I mean, uh, they will give deposit mobilization and that too at a, you know, kind of uh, uh, interest bearing deposit mobilization. So I think the practices have uh, gone crazy. Uh, so to make money in an honest way uh, in a lot of infrastructure projects in a predictable way i mean yeah. definitely in some project or other you make money but in a predictable way is it a good business i would i mean you cannot uh, uh, you cannot say that it's a good business and everybody can do it maybe yeah. one lnt can uh, pull it off you know yeah. because they have bargaining power probably they take it on their own terms and government departments also listen to them but it's not everybody's cup of tea to make money out of infrastructure large infrastructure projects hmm. what about telecom the mess continues, but one yeah. silver lining came in uh, again yesterday with at least uh, uh, the ability now for telecom companies to use the spectrum as a. Uh, we as don't an asset. read too much till anything is notified. Every day will be different news. <laughs> it's a nightmare, you know. I mean, I, I have stopped analyzing. I said the day on which it becomes law, you know, that day we will analyze whether it is a good law or bad law. So you stopped reading papers, you stopped no, 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 watching reading, TV. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, it doesn't make sense. Someday they say that uh, we want to do it for 10 years, someday they want to do it for 20 years, someday they want to have it for 50,000 crores, someday they want it to have for 10,000 crores. And uh, Tri, Dot, Egom, uh, I mean, I don't know how many bodies are there. Once I did they get up and say pay for the past. Pa past, yeah, past <laughs> also, reforming and so many new terminologies, I don't know. I mean, uh, suddenly it has become a, I think uh, CA was more easier than telecom <laughs> policy in India. <laughs> what about the IT sector? That lo that's looking promising. You've been a believer in yeah, Indian IT. I, I, I still think uh, uh, Indian IT has a uh, way to go. And there'll be a lot of uh, disruptive models, uh, but business opportunities are exploding, like this cloud and 4G and then mobility and all these things are coming together. And uh, so uh, the way IT is being used, that itself may change and that may open new type of opportunities, some losers, some gainers in mm -hmm. this new model. But uh, I think it is going to be an exciting time. Uh, they are saying that the uh, deal pipeline is very strong, except that in the global economy, the confidence is less. So deal closer is a little slower. but. Uh, uh, stickiness and size of the deals and uh, their competence, their uh, requirement uh, for services is just exploding. So my sense is that 15, 17, 18 percent growth uh, is uh, not a problem. And after 10 years, they've got this currency kicker. So it should be good. Have you revised your earnings uh, for FY13? Talking for the Sensex? Yes. Yeah. I mean. Uh, yes, I mean it is a quarterly exercise. So now they they stand at about 1260 for the next year. Which is better than uh, what you told me last yeah, time. Yeah, 1250. 12, no, it's almost same, uh, but, but more positive. More positive side. And that's purely a valuation issue. Uh, no, see what happened down. was the Q4 hmm. was much better than anybody anticipated. The Q4 hmm. or Q4 of last year, it is one of the biggest earnings surprise. It's almost 28 percent up over uh, Q4 of last year. Yeah. And uh, that's why markets have been much stronger than what you, I mean, what most of the people are thinking. Yeah. Uh, and next year also, it looks that uh, 1250, 1260 is not a that big a problem. And yeah. if uh, interest rates go down quickly, and uh, a little help from the oil now, yeah. I think achieving maybe even higher than 1250, 1260 is not a difficult thing. Okay.
from a 12 to 18 month kind of a perspective, Ramdo, do you think we'll be closer to levels of 12,000 or closer to levels of 20,000? It's, it's tough. I mean, uh, I, I, I would, 12,000 12, looks to be very tough to me. I mean, I, I don't know about, uh, yeah, we're at 16. So right. uh, I, I would think that uh, 16, uh, 15 to 20 is a good range okay. uh, to talk about rather than 12 to 20. So yeah. what I'm saying is down... You see, you see an upside from here on, yeah. chances of an upside more than yeah. the chances of a downside. Like uh, breakdown below 40, I mean now it is, I think index is about 5,000, isn't it? That's right. So, uh, I mean, 4,800 and all looks to be uh, very, uh, very solid uh, kind of a downside range. Upside could be, it could surprise people. So if I were to sum this up, you're saying while there are structural issues, but as far as valuations, company performance is concerned, there is still a lot of positivity according to you. Yeah, it's a, it looks a very rock-solid kind of a corporate performance sure. for uh, last year. So the corporates are being like rowdy or tour. It's just the government <laughs> which needs to be the... Which. Yeah, I mean, that <laughs> okay. seems to be the kind of situation right now. And uh, for investor, for like me, I look at uh, not headlines so much. I also hear, mm. but I focus on the stocks. And uh, focusing those stocks, you can, you know, I mean, every two, three months, one good idea of your liking, you get it, that's enough. And there will be good times in the economy, there will be bad times in the economy. But it is the bad time in which you can buy the good stocks at reasonable prices. Hmm. So this is the time. All right, Ramdeo. Always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much for coming by. Well, that was Ramdeo Agarwal. Lots more action coming up on Bloomberg UTV. Keep watching.